'twas the night before Christmas, and wouldn't you know, Rob was giving his house a Christmassy glow. There was no time for food, nor cleaning, nor flossing, as only one thing was on his agenda, Animal Crossing. Rock wanted to play games to celebrate the season, but not many existed for some reason, and so a quest he embarked on to find holiday cheer before later that night when Saint Nick would appear. Oh, hey, what's up? It's your boy Rock again. Yeah, this isn't even the first time you've caught me doing this. Yikes. Well, what can I say? I love getting into the holiday spirit, whether it be festive or frightening, my house must fit the tone. Now I know in my Halloween video I might have hinted at the fact that I like Halloween more so than Christmas. It's my favourite holiday. Halloween has a vastly superior vibe and atmosphere. Maybe it was more than hinting, but it's December! There's snow on the window because... I put it there. It's about as cold as... it... usually is. And the trees are... dead. You know, living in England sucks! I tackled Halloween in the realm of gaming, so I think it's only fair that we give Christmas the same treatment. So let's delve into what Nintendo left under our trees and in our stockings. It better not be socks this year. Somehow worse! Hey guys, I got big surprise. Animal Crossing does Christmas and it does it well. Yeah, whoop de fucking shock horror. Animal Crossing has a Christmas event. Now, I already covered the core concept of Animal Crossing on Halloween, and believe it or not, the definition hasn't changed since. What a fucking relief! In New Leaf, Christmas, or Toy Day, Okay. Has its own furniture set, as you would expect. It's really nice, but in my opinion, it's got nothing on the spooky set. Although it does fit the theme of the month extremely well, so I'll give it that. The set in New Horizons, however, is f***ing incredible. Such a well-fitting set that gives the ambience of a large-scale Christmas display you'd see in a city. It's fantastic. The Toy Day festivities work very differently to our spooky compadres quests, as instead of being a prick to everyone, we're nice! Gonna have to get used to that. The event begins with <gasps> Rudolph the Black Nose Jingle. Yep, yeah, no. You have to dress up as a certain obese icon, and upon doing so and talking to Jingle, he'll ask you to deliver presents to your villagers. Your villagers will drop hints on what they want throughout the entire month of December, and you use this information to deliver the correct presents to the correct animals. They only drop vague hints such as the colour, which makes this more of a fun puzzle, and getting all of them correct is incredibly satisfying. Toy Day is actually on Christmas Eve, which I appreciate, because, you know, Christmas Day is meant for... well... not really Animal Crossing. Of course, Toy Day's come to New Horizons too, and I can't describe how much I want to play it Nintendo UPDATE THE F***ING GAME! Toy Day is an incredibly fun event. It's certainly not as complex or deep as the Halloween event, it essentially boils down to just giving the right thing to the right animal, and depending on how much preparation you do beforehand will determine how easy of a task this is. Last year was the first year that I was able to play the event, and I tried to do as much preparation as I could. I talked to all of my animals, they all gave me vague hints as to what they wanted, and I... didn't make notes. I tried relying strictly on my memory, and that worked about as well as Mario Maker 2 Online. So, every time I got one right, I would save the game and keep going, and if I got one wrong... Let's just say, Dignity was not on the menu tonight. This event absolutely nails the ambience of Christmas, and adds immensely to the excitement surrounding the season. I absolutely adore this event, and the music that accompanies it... Holy shit, it's fantastic. This is legitimately one of my favourite tracks in the game. It's so relaxing and calming, and it has this aura of festive magic. It's hard to properly describe, but if you've heard the theme, then you know exactly what I mean. This event is so good, it's very relaxing, and amplifies the build-up to Christmas excellently. The mascot Jingle is adorable. He's obviously based on Santa, and for the longest time, I just thought he was the Santa of this universe, which definitely makes sense. Until he and the other villagers refer to Santa as a separate entity. So who the hell is this guy? There's actually no definitive answer for this, nor is there any one theory that's unanimously agreed on like with Jack, but that isn't going to stop me from speculating. I think it makes sense that the real Santa is off dealing with the humans of this world, while Jingle is the one delivering festive feel-good to the animals. However, the animals still seem pretty fixated on the idea of Santa, so when Jingle sees you on Christmas Eve spawning the attire of our favourite overweight man in red, our second favourite overweight man in red, he asks you to play the part. Jingle also isn't imbued with Santa's power to know exactly what everybody wants for Toy Day, which is why it's your job to figure it out, because at the end of the day, who knows your villagers better than you? The final change in New Leaf around this time of year is that when a camper arrives at the campsite, instead of a tent, they set up in an igloo, 
which is so cosy. There's a pot of food lit by a fire, surrounded by a carpet. The whole place has such a soft colour scheme and the music is absolute bliss. Tomodachi Life also has a Christmas event and it simultaneously has less and more effort put into it than the Halloween event. My brain is going to fucking implode! The island looks beautiful. It's covered from head to toe in snow, which is also the case in Animal Crossing. This isn't exclusive to Christmas or anything, but it just feels right, you know? All of the Mies in the shops greet you with some form of holiday greeting, whether it be happy holidays or season's greetings or some other phrase that connotes obesity in the colour red. All of the shops are decorated, but this is the one aspect of the event that I feel falls a bit short. The extent of the decoration in most shops is just one decoration, like a wreath or a tree. It's fitting, sure, but way less extravagant than the Halloween decorations, which is kind of disappointing. But then this is offset by the fact that there's a whole Christmas song! This song is upbeat and jolly to the nth degree, and the fact that this event gets a full-fledged song while Halloween gets nothing? What the fuck is going on here? I absolutely adore it when special events have their own songs. It really emphasises how special this time of year is, and this song in Tomodachi Life does just that. There's also an interior which is every synonym of amazing that thesaurus.com can come up with. Unfortunately, much like with Halloween, Tomodachi Life and Animal Crossing are the only Nintendo games that directly reference Christmas. And unlike with Halloween, Christmas doesn't have its own equivalent in Luigi's Mansion. Fuck. Naturally though, many games have places that are very befitting of the holiday season, snowy levels being the best example. Did you think I was going to say Wario Stadium? Each of the places I'm about to talk about also have incredibly festive music, and much like with Halloween, this is so important. For both holidays, my favourite thing outside of blowing all my money on decorations is just listening to my playlist of gaming songs for both holidays. And for Christmas? We're about to cover most of them. Banjo-Kazooie, a game that I haven't mentioned nearly enough on my channel. A game that has one of the greatest Christmas levels in gaming. Freeze Easy Peak is full of festive feel-good, and I can't get enough of it. There's a Christmas tree, a boatload of presents, and a giant traversable snowman. The music here is fantastic. So jolly and upbeat, it really gets me in the jingle mood. The snowy atmosphere in this area is also phenomenal, and has such a cosy feel. The Iceberg Zone from Poke Park Way is a similar situation to Freeze Easy Peak, but it taps more into the frozen ice aesthetic as opposed to the snowy plains one. This area also prominently features a Christmas tree, and Delibird, the Pokemon equivalent to Santa, has you delivering presents to the Pokemon throughout the zone. Each time you do, more decorations are added to the Christmas tree, and the completed product is fantastic. The music is incredibly fitting and has a weirdly magical feel to it. I don't know, that's just the sort of vibe I get from it. Freezy Flake Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy 2. This one's a personal favourite for me. The log cabin on the first planet and the bunny living inside it, the frozen lake to skate over, the snow sculptures of Bowser and Goombas and this weird fucking boss are all so magical to me. Objectively speaking, this level has nothing on the previous two, but the saving grace is the music. Good fucking God! This is legitimately my favourite Christmas song in all of gaming, and I have no shame in saying that. Super Mario Galaxy 2 has objectively the best Christmas level in the Mario series, but I have such a soft spot for the Snow Kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey. Because of course I do. I'm also talking about the underground here. I mean, the frozen tundra above is some seriously neat shit, but it doesn't even hold a candle. To Shiveria. You fall down from the surface to be immediately serenaded by one of the jolliest pieces of Mario music I've ever heard. The layout of this area is incredibly unique, I adore exploring this place. And of course, we're greeted by the Shiverians, who are hands down my favourite race in the entire game, hell, maybe the entire series. The jury's still out on whether or not they're better than any of Sunshine's races, but hey, fuck that game for now, I refuse to talk about anything that doesn't run the risk of hypothermia. The Snow Kingdom is just a treat, and one that I visit very often around this time of year, you get a race is a fucking bouncy ball, need I say more? Of course, mainline Mario isn't the only sector of the plumber's career that's worth talking about. Mario Kart rearing its head into most conversations is about as inevitable as me hating Sonic Forces. It's a fucking guarantee. The Mario Kart series has its fair share of Christmassy tracks. The one that sticks out the most in my mind is Sherbetland, and this one undoubtedly has the best music. The Double Dash variant is an absolute treat, but for my money, I'll take the Mario Kart 8 remix any day of the week. Yes even on Tuesdays. Of course, there are other winter tracks. Frappe Snowland, Ice Ice Outpost, DK Snowboard Cross, DK Pass, Mount Wario, Sherbetland 64, which is a different Sherbetland to this Sherbetland, okay. And of course, who could forget, Rosalina's Ice World. <gasps> Me! Even the Animal Crossing track in Mario Kart 8 gets in on the festive fun. I absolutely love this rendition of the Animal Crossing theme from that game. It's just so good. Now, I know I've been mainly focusing on Nintendo this entire time, but it'd be a crime for me not to mention a certain indie game that's on the Switch and has representation in Smash. Jesus! 
Woo! Rock said the funny game name. <laughs> Shut the f up, this game is better than the sum of its memes. Snowden! I fucking love this place. Snowden is a cozy little village carved in the middle of a dense snowy forest. You could say that its people are snowed in. Cozy really is the best word to describe this place and its music. It's relatively small, but the people there are what make it shine through. The igloos are fast travel points, which is also really creative. All in all, I just love this place. It's one that often slips my mind in all honesty, but as soon as I remember it, I'm already on my way there. Fortunately, that's about all there is to talk about. I know it seems like I've mentioned a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, this is really inconsequential. Like really, what else is there for me to talk about? Overwatch Christmas event? New Super Mario Brothers? Kirby's Epic Yarn? F why does Christmas get such little representation when it comes to games? It's not like nobody cares about it, quite the opposite. Like Halloween, I get it's a fairly niche holiday, but Christmas? That's what the entire year's building up to! Wait a minute. It's because... Christmas isn't meant to be spent alone playing games. It's a time for family and giving. Huh. Well... I guess I should take part in that. I mean, after all, a man can only play Poke Park Wii so many times, 58 and counting. Considering how late I decided to participate, I think giving's off the table. I mean, what would I really be able to give? I have no options. But I could try the whole spending time with other humans thing, and what better way to do that than with some festive flavoured multiplayer games? Why can't I just interact with people without video games? Come on, do I look like I don't have- so I'll throw a Christmas party! I'll have to send out invites. Now I would usually do this via Miiverse, but Nintendo decided they weren't okay with the whole concept of happiness. So I guess I'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. Calling all anti-loneliness supporters, if you have an undying appreciation for human interaction and the birth of our Lord and Saviour, JESUS CHRIST do I have a social gathering for you! Feel free to make your way down to We'll Figure It Out Later Street at I Don't Care O'Clock, and remember, facial hair, red hats and obesity are a right, not a privilege. Alright, we should have some people here soon, so it's time to prepare. Video games are a necessity to ensure that people are distracted from how mind-numbingly boring I am, so we need to pick up some really good ones. So, where do we start? Well, naturally, Animal Crossing is a multiplayer game with heavy focus on Christmas, but there is one problem with that. New Leaf requires every player to have their own 3DS and their own copy of the game, and asking people to bring a 3DS and New Leaf to a party is a surefire way to get on a wanted list. And New Horizons does support same-screen multiplayer, but they did the unthinkable and required every player to have their own character. Which means my island would be littered with tents of characters that'll be used once and then completely forgotten about and that... is 18 of my least favourite words in order. So let's avoid that. I could ask people to bring a Switch in New Horizons. But come on, I can't guarantee that the people coming to this party are part of both of these statistics. I just can't. So unfortunately, Animal Crossing is off the table. Tomodachi Life and Banjo-Kazooie are both single player, so unfortunately, they're out. And same goes with Poke Park Wii. I know, Christmas is ruined! So, what's left? I guess the new Super Mario Bros series is a safe bet. The home console ones are both multiplayer as fuck, with an entire world's worth of winter levels in each. And also, this series in multiplayer is batch crazy in the best way. So, we have at least two games. I would have picked the Switch version, but in 4 players, someone has to have a handicap, and God forbid anybody has fun. Alright, what else do we have? Oh yeah, f***ing Mario Kart. This series has a plethora of winter levels, as I touched on earlier, but each game only has like two, so we'll need multiple games to avoid for as long as possible. So I'm just gonna go with all the home console games after Super. Super Mario Kart isn't a bad game, far from it, but it only supports two-player multiplayer, and we wouldn't want anyone to... Leave. I picked Deluxe over it purely because, unlike with Mario U, the multiplayer isn't nerfed here. And finally, well, that's about it. <gasps> Wait, no, I stand corrected. Mario Party has some winter themed boards, such as Snowflake Lake in Mario Party 6 and Chilly Waters in Mario Party 3. Damn it! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that isn't happening. Well, we've managed to scrape together the bare minimum amount of games for a Christmas party. I forgot to prepare food and drink. Well, f caloric intake for a while, because look at the time! It's time to welcome our guests. What the fuck? Nobody showed up! I put so much work into this! Christmas is ruined! Wait a minute. What year is it again? Yup, that would explain a lot. 
Oh my god, it's a Christmas miracle! You came to help me in my time of need. Wait. Can you talk? Y yeah, because you're a, you're a cat. <laughs> well, I hope you can play Mario Party. And so, our Christmas story comes to an end, and Rock only had a cat for a friend. They spent all night playing Mario Bros and Kart. The cat wasn't good, but she warmed Rock's heart. As we close the chapter of our lives that is 2020, Rock had New Year's resolutions to consider. There were plenty. He must find some real friends to join him on Mario courses, and find many more ways to insult Sonic forces. Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year! Who the f*** are you? Shit! Run! I don't even know her! Plot twist! The cat can talk! This, this is what cats sound like! What? What the f***?